Okay, so today Clive and I are going to talk about um, why the dog didn't bark. So. Is there any other point to which you wish to draw my attention, Mr. Holmes? To the curious incident of the dog in the night time. But the dog did nothing in the night time. That is the curious incident. Okay, so I'd just like to start by giving you a bit of background about UCL. It's a research-led university. We have 22,000 students, 2,500 teaching staff, around three, uh, three schools, 10 faculties, around 70 teaching departments, and 4,500 taught modules. Um, so today we're talking about um, how we are going to a total Moodle for all of these modules. At UCL, all of these modules are man manually created into Moodle courses. We don't have what a lot of universities have, um, where the um, student records system that contains all the modules automatically populates Moodle. We do them manually, one by one. And the reason for that is that some of our um, departments and schools, like especially the medical school, tend to run, um, rather than module-based Moodle courses, a whole program within uh, one Moodle course. So we just find that that's easier. And another benefit to, to doing things manually is that we don't end up with a lot of empty courses on Moodle. Um, we only create them as the, the staff request them. So most of them are populated. So when we started looking at how we were going to get all of these modules online, we started by creating some minimum requirements. And I have seen a lot of um, activity in forums recently about this very thing. Uh, we expected all of our courses to have a consistent set of information to support face-to-face -face teaching. We weren't expecting a lot from these Moodle courses, um, but we do expect them to be organised, accessible, and that the staff consider copyright issues. So the minimum requirements for a Moodle course at UCL are that they have staff contact details, a module outline, module handbook, reading lists, and we do have a, um, a block that we've actually developed in-house, which will link through to the UCL reading list service, which is an online system that gives students access to many reading materials digitally. And it also must include a discussion forum. Every course has a news forum in it by default, so this is quite easy to do. We also recommend that they should include um, a timetable or course calendar. Uh, a lot of people started by creating this in the Moodle calendar, but we, we now have a um, common timetable system at UCL, so we've developed another custom block which easily links out to that common timetable for modules or um, entire programs as well. Um, we also recommend that they should include simple things like lecture notes, presentation slides, any handouts. Uh, a glossary of key terms was initially put in here, but I think we're thinking about maybe removing that because it doesn't seem to apply to a lot of courses. And we also recommend links to external resources. That tends to be a link to the departmental website initially, and any additional texts and resources. Alongside these minimum requirements, um, I'm not going to go into detail, but we did set up uh, some more extensive requirements um, if you wanted to go beyond the baseline. Okay, so these requirements here, um, we went to an academic committee and convinced them that we, this is something that should be done. And they, in the spring of 2010, agreed to this, and a staff email went out from the chair of the academic committee that all modules must have a Moodle presence at baseline level by September 2011. We prepared a template. This is our template email um, because we expected a, a big backlash about this. And this is what actually happened. <laughs> okay. 
And I'm going to hand over to Clive now, who's going to talk about why. They are seamless changeover now. Um, I mean, why we, why we showed the, the, the picture, which I'm sure you recognise as some Sherlock Holmes at the beginning, was this was a bit of a mystery to us, because uh, I've been working in e-learning for uh, oh, nearly two decades, really, long time, and this was the most extraordinary, extraordinary thing I'd ever seen, is that we sent out this email saying to staff, you must have these uh, Moodle courses, and we thought they'd be they're coming at us with you know, sticks and burning, what's it, to, to burn down the uh, <coughs> learning technologist's office. Um, and it didn't happen. So we had a little think about this, and um, we, it was a bit of a, um, a detective work, but we, we, I think we've worked out what really happened there. Uh, and we think there's four things happened all at the same time, which um, we hadn't, some of them we'd picked up, and some of them were things we hadn't really noticed within the university. And I think together what this happened is there's been, there's been a change in this university. It's a research-based university, and um, something's happened there which has allowed Moodle to come in in a way which we, we really didn't expect. Um, and we said there's four things. One thing about something that, that the institution has done. <clears throat> something about the support staff. That's mostly us, but not just us. That's we the learning technologists at UCL. There's something really, really important that's happened out in the departments, which we, we didn't spot until quite recently. And then there's something that students have been doing as well. So the combination of these things, uh, I've meant that the dog didn't bark. So let's start with the institution. Uh, the first one is this email came from academic committee. That's a senior uh, committee uh, in this area in, in UCL. Now that obviously showed some degree of institutional commitment, fair enough, um, some credibility within that. But these sort of things sometimes happen within universities and they don't actually get, um, um, they don't actually get implemented on the ground. But what had been happening at the same time is we'd been integrating other sy systems within Moodle itself. So one of the big ones was Turnitin, the plagiarism detection system, which we, we run for about two years, I think, now. Um, first of all, it was separated. Then it became within the Moodle, uh, Moodle uh, module in there. And that was hugely um, important because it meant that many departments who had never really looked at Moodle before came and started using it simply to use Turnitin. Simil similarly, uh, Echo360, which is le lecture capture that we're using, hello, over there. Um, again, that is available uh, solely through Moodle uh, within UCL. And that's another motivation for people to use it. So we've got these two kind of major uh, external systems. We've got the library leading, uh, uh, reading list that uh, Jess mentioned as well. Again, another reason for using Moodle. And the common timetable, which is only about a year old, really, within, uh, within UCL. That means that all the um, top modules have this timetable of lectures and practicals and tutorials and things like that that students get access to, again, through Moodle and their own personal timetables. So these two things have kind of come together. You've got the sort of top-down and the kind of bottom-up um, changes. So that's one part of it. Second one, one was that uh, we'd started, uh, look at me maybe about two years ago, we'd, we'd, we'd got all the, we'd, we'd these big printouts to say well, what departments were using Moodle, which weren't, and how many were using them and how many weren't, and we started to um, identify what you might call cool spots, which were departments who weren't heavy users, and we'd gone in, we'd got some funding to do this, and gone and really started working with these staff. So we targeted the late adopters, now those late adopters are the sort of people who are often resistant. When you get these institutional initiatives, these are the sort of people who may respond. But we'd already, we'd already headed them off at the past, to make some metaphors there. And uh, we'd kind of corralled them into a group which we were working with. So we'd become a little bit more sophisticated in dealing with, because you can do that with a Moodle, obviously. You can identify who's with what. We can compare that against the, the structure of the university. And we, can, we became much more sophisticated in working out where we're going to target our, our, our effort to try and get uh, people changing. The other thing that, uh, again, that Jess mentioned, we had this uh, ideal of this baseline. And the baseline um, was kind of quite simple and deliberately simplistic, really. It's a very simple type course. But it meant something that we could promote as something that was very easy to achieve. Uh, we aligned it against our training. We said, look, in three, three hours training in a group session, we can get you up to the baseline. You don't need to. That's it. You've got to the baseline. Or in a one-to-one, -one, we can get people up in, in, in an hour, uh, half an hour, if they're really very good. So there was something that was quite achievable, it was an unachievable objective. But we didn't obviously close it at that point, we have this uh, enhanced level as well, and that's what we're going to be working on next, to get people beyond that baseline. The baseline, I think, was very important 
to give us a kind of a, a, a really achievable target for everyone to get to. Now, this was, I think, was, the, um, was kind of key as well, which I say we didn't identify this. We started doing training. We do a lot of training in Moodle, as you can imagine. And what we found is about, uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, we were getting an awful lot of new um, administrative staff coming in. Uh, who were interested in Moodle. It wasn't, we were, or, always gear our stuff towards academics. That's what we tend to do. But these admin staff would come in. So we, we actually created a, a Moodle course uh, specifically for administrators, and we advertised that around the, the university, and that was inundated by people who wanted to come in and learn about the administrative side of Moodle. So what was happening there was something that was unbeknown to us, is that the university had been gradually reorganizing. And what happens is within departments is the admin kind of duties of departments have become ever more complicated, so they've now employed people simply to become departmental administrators, or DAs as we call them. Yeah? This is a relatively new concept in many of the research universities, or the ones I've worked in anyway. Now, these people are quite different from the kind of old administrators. They tend to be younger, they often have quite a lot of subject experience, they, you know, they're ex-graduates and so on, sometimes working part-time, uh, coming in to do this type of job. They're highly skilled, um, they're, key, they're technologically keen, um, they're very easy for us to manage because they are, they're admin people. I mean, um, what we find is academics, I'm sure you find the same if you're a support people, academics are quite difficult to, to manage, to get them to do what you want. But admin people, just because of their kind of nature, are slightly easier to work with. And we find them very uh, amenable to following the kind of guidance that we provide them. I'm very keen to come in and do that. So, so what had happened is that these people come in, and in some of them, their job description had uh, to do with sort of setting up Moodle and providing support for the courses. So again, this kind of group of, uh, group of academics who may have been resistant to this, their needs were kind of met by their admin colleagues who are actually putting the courses together for them. Okay? There are problems in that, which I'm sure you'll, you'll already be thinking of, but that was actually what was happening in the university. So as well as academic staff, we've got a substantial cadre of admins who are putting together the, the Moodle courses. And so uh, as the sort of... Um, while that was going on, we're taking a lot of the, uh, um, the, the independent websites which have been used to support... Uh, top programs were being moved into Moodle at the same time. So there's quite a lot of activity uh, going along there. <coughs> on top of that, so that was three things that was happening. On top of that, we're getting this kind of flow in from the, from the students. And we've been kind of surprised by this in a sort of a way. Maybe we should have been. Maybe we should have been more alert to this. But we did a kind of a, uh, we did a, uh, a survey of students just before Christmas. And we asked them about how UCL could improve the teaching and learning environment uh, for the students. And this is the sort of things that we're saying. We want Moodle. We want more Moodle. We want better Moodle. We want Moodle to look the same. We want consistency. The sort of things spontaneously that were coming out from them. So, I just say we're a little, a little surprised by that. Um, but what, what we think is probably happening is that's come also through the departments as well. The students are making that kind of demands on the academic staff. Um, and we're using this as a, as a way to encourage the kind of later doctors to, to think more carefully about the Moodle. Because I would say, well, look in a department, if you've got half your staff are doing quite good Moodle and half are not, you know, your students are going to notice it. And they do notice it. They're quite, criti they're quite critical of, of the, the online environment. Um, and, and they do use it quite a lot. So, uh, so we've got the students there coming in as, 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 as they're demanding, demanding this change. And I would just notice that there was this, that, that actually is a little post-it note. There's the Students' Union... Um, had a, 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 an ideas wall. And students had to put up sort of um, post-it notes to saying how UCL could be improved in a general way and teaching and learning more specifically. And the first thing that came up was why are lecture notes never on Moodle before the lecture? It's the first thing that came to students' minds. Which I thought, we didn't do that. We didn't sort of, that was one of the, some spontaneous students uprising. Okay, so that's why, this is why we think the dog didn't bark. There's not an easy answer there. There's a complex thing that's going on in the university, which we believe the university has actually changed. There's been a fundamental change. And it was interesting that uh, Gronje, Gronje Connolly was talking about this morning about, um, about how people hadn't picked up on the technology, you know, particularly. Um, well, not to the point that we would like. And I think it's because a lot of things have got to happen together for that significant change to take place. And the first time I, I came across VLEs was probably about 15 years ago. 15 years ago. So it's taken 15 years for this particular uni this type of university to go from zero to this kind of what we call now called total Moodle. So it takes quite a long time, and there's quite a lot of things to just kind of line up 
for, for change to happen. So, so where, where have we got to now? So we've got to uh, we've got September 2011. So it's not very far away now. Uh, we're now reviewing our courses again. We'll have a look at them to see what the um, uh, there are still some kind of cool spots that we need to work with. Uh, so we're going out to supporting them. We don't call them laggards, obviously, but we are supporting the laggards, um, to helping them to move forward. Uh, we're doing a lot more work with the DAs. We're now going to start meeting with the uh, departmental administrators uh, in order to sort out what they do and what we do. Now, they're, they're a really interesting group. As I say, they're quite active. They're quite well networked. And they've come back to us and said, what should we be doing with Moodle? What should we be doing as part of our, our, our job description? And what should the academics be doing? And this is what we do. We don't, we don't actually have an answer to that. So we're going to have a couple of meetings uh, before the summer where we start to start working these things out to see if we can get an agreement across the university. And these are quite complex. They're quite complex because they, the, the DAs are very different from different departments. The departments are very different. Uh, but we are very keen to support them. There are, there are barefoot learning technologists out there working in the departments. Uh, and one of the things also that Gronje mentioned this morning was uh, good practice and, and really to be, be much better at identifying good practice out in the departments and then feeding it back to say this is what we think is kind of good. And the opportunity really we've had to systematically review all our Moodle courses has been a way of identifying some of those good practices as well. We'll have to write, write a report back to the academic committee in September. Uh, we're not really one to do that as a kind of a you know, tick the box and it's all done. We're trying to get the, 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 the culture with, the, with our uh, departments. This is part of a negotiation. It's an ongoing conversation with them. So we get to this point and we're going to keep going. We would hope. So what do we do after totality? Once you get this total dream of total Moodle. Um, well, we want to move from um, uh, quantity into quality and that should be our focus uh, from then on. Um, improve our training and, and guidance, the things we mentioned before, again, especially for these, this new group of people, our DAs. Uh, we have to recognise that, that people will no longer be creating new courses. I mean, a lot of our training has been based on start with a blank Moodle shell and build up from there. Well, nobody has a blank Moodle shell anymore. We're all using courses that we've already got. So we have to be thinking about people, how do they make over the Moodle course? Not how to start from it. What's the sort of things you should be looking at that from courses which have already been in existence and already running? Um, we need to improve our own service about we, we get better archiving, better uh, Turnitin uh, integration and so on. Uh, we think that the technologies we mentioned, I mentioned it earlier, uh, earlier on, is also going to bring in um, more um, ways of using Moodle. For example, we, we're quite impressed with Echo 360. Hello again, Echo 360. Um, they, 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 we believe there will be social commenting on some of the, you know, make the, make the, the, the video material available that students can then comment on and so on. We think that can be really important for the university. Um, we are improving our reading list to make them much more, um, much more easy for the academics to use. They can be much more dynamic and fluid in making reading lists available to students. Uh, we'd like to integrate more with uh, our Mahara portfolio, which we, we're, we're underdoing at the moment. And of course we've got Moodle too, which should be another, another chance for this other kind of step change in what we, what we offer. Um, and that's where we are now. So we're, we're, we're at this kind of brink towards Total Moodle, and we're just kind of looking over the horizon to see what comes next. But I think what we're, we're quite hopeful, because we see a university which has changed quite fundamentally, in which, which, ways which we didn't really predict two years ago. Thank you. Questions, yes? Start in the back. No, it's okay. Yes, the right. Yeah. Uh, what's the, what are you doing? Are you moving, bringing in the, the VLE? Uh, yes, we had it with one platform now. We're going to have to change the whole thinking of the training that we're doing. Yes. As well as the We've found that um, we need to work very closely with the departments, with the actual, as, as close as you can get to the users as you can. Um, we've kind of moved away from the, uh, back in the early days, we'd do general training sessions, and people would, you would know, learn, um, a sort of kind of just in case type of learning and we've moved much closer now to working with departments and trying to get people to think what their needs are at that functional level. I think the closer you can get there and that's not, that's not particularly scalable, unfortunately it's not particularly scalable because you have to do a lot of kind of close work 
with individuals. But that is where you're going to get that change made. And I think that some of the things that we talked about earlier, it's really things that happen right down at the department level which have enabled that to happen. Uh, and it means a lot of legwork. It means a lot of being out of the office and speaking to people and trying to identify your kind of key um, groups within the university, people like the administrators or your other learning technologists or other people out of the department, try and get them all together and, 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 and um, providing the same message, if you like, so all kind of joins up. Uh, yeah, is it? We can make it available, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, we're very happy to share that. Because this is something actually we've just kind of perhaps discovered quite recently. I mean, it's maybe taken 15 years to get that. Yeah. I'm a slow learner, obviously. But yeah. 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 We're happy to speak to you offline as well. Please do. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah, we're very happy to share it. There's another question up the back yourself. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's a, an excellent question. We haven't really solved that one yet. Um, what we're, we've been trying to do is get everyone to the kind of same baseline level. Okay. Um, but to, um, when we go in to look at, see, see we as administrators with Moodle, we can look at any course anyone's produced. You know, four, we've got 4,000 courses, something like that, we can look into. But it's actually very difficult for us to go in and look in at a course and see whether that's any good. Because what the, what the, what the, um, the, 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 the market, ma member of academic staff is doing with the students is what's really important, it's interaction. So the course may just have three or four resources, but the way they're used can be really fantastic. Otherwise, you might have a course which is really, looks very great, but it's not very, you know, the students don't use it very much. So, it's, again, we've got to, in order to kind of get to this, and it's not really micromanaging the sense, it's going down and kind of get a dialogue with the academics. And that's going to be really quite challenging for us. What I'd really like, what I'd really like, is for our, each of our academic departments or academic units to have their own plan. To have their own plan. See, well, this is what we want to do with Moodle. We want to do it in this kind of way. Gronia this morning mentioned three or four different ways you can use Moodle, from quizzes through to rule-based learning and other things as well. But we'd like them to think that, and then we don't have to micromanage, but we encourage them to move down that route. And I think that's the only way forward, because there's no way that myself or Jess can ever look into 4,000 courses and say, this is a good one, this is a good one, this isn't. Uh, we can't audit it in that way, um, but we can certainly encourage our academics to be a bit more creative in what they're doing. Can you make suggestions? Yeah, um, I, I th that is, that we do that all the time, but that tends to be, as it's not, it's, the problem with that is it's not very efficient, because we can go in with an academic and say, well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about putting a, a quiz here, or a, a discussion here, or uh, what about... Um, put some of this stuff into Moodle books or into a lesson or something like that. But that needs quite a lot of discussion because you have to kind of tease out of them what they want to do with the... Um, I think we can be a little bit more sophisticated in providing um, um, uh, you know, be better kind of case studies, if you like. But the thing that Gronje mentioned this morning I thought was very important was people like to have examples which they can really relate to within their subject matter. Again, I think this comes back to the t departmental approach is to try and get people to, to think uh, within their subject level of, um, uh, of, 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 of getting ideas from that point. Uh, Jess, did you want to say something? Sorry. Yeah, sorry, Jess. I'm, so I'm, I've, been, I've been holding the... Noticing departments doing half their own work, which will be encouraging, is setting up their own working groups. And so you get um, players, people who are quite interested in, in getting ready to work with them. Hmm. Yeah.
Um, not, yeah, this is just ideas of things, you know, nothing that's gone, but kind of the ideas we've got. <laughs> We, we don't do that at the moment, but these are the types of ideas we've been playing with to kind of bring forward that idea of um, competing with each other and maybe even um, even granting um, money to people who do a really nice little course so that they can take a or something like that. Because at the moment um, there's a lot of um, people getting awarded for great research, but in the university that we're at, not a lot to I think, I think that the, 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 in a sense, the students already rate the coaches as as dark stars, which I had quite. Clearly, but see, there's, a, there's some problems in that getting that through. But I think the students see in Moodle and more demanding, and they're not always de always demanding in the in the in being pedagogically sound. By the way, just like give us the stuff, give us all the lecture cast, gives all that stuff on like, um, because that makes our job easier as students, you know. And, you know, sometimes we have to be a bit careful about going that completely demand-led, because you may say that um, that's not a bit more inquiry-based. The question at the back there. Absolutely. And there's a problem with the Moodle, isn't there? Because it is a walled garden in that sense. So it's quite difficult for people to see in what other people do, even in their own department. Uh, and we're very reluctant to let other people see in because it's, a, it's, it's currently it's a private space. Um, so again, when we go to departments, we start to negotiate that, saying, well, what can we make, make available? Is anybody out there who thinks they've got a good course that they want their colleagues to see? And we can help them to make that course even better and look nice and so on. So th this, this is, again, is something we have to kind of keep, keep working on. A couple of questions there. There's one there. Yeah. Red, Ray, our professor. Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. Have yeah, it's not quite cold. Wait, what is it? Uh, ourselves create a lot more modules. Set the carry them over and we archive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good question, actually. Um, <laughs> that's a, that's a question which we don't really want. 
<laughs> we don't really want we don't really want to answer that question really. No. I mean where where we've got where we go into a department and a, a typical conversation we'd have in a department we'd meet with the head of department and some of the administrators and maybe some of the academic staff as well. And we'd say, well, what we're, what we're wanting to do is to be able to sign this off, to say that we have reached a totality for this department. Now, let's go backwards and forwards until we get to a point where we're happy with this. Uh, well, first of all, we need to have um, a Moodle a course for all, all the top, top modules. That's the first thing, so we have to have that. And let's try and help with the administrators and other people make sure we have all the, enough of the content in there, in, in there so we can say that we have actually achieved that. And that's not really so far proved problematic. Um, even though some of the departments, I can think, I'll not name any names, but some have had very little Moodle uh, um, presence. Uh, they are okay with us creating courses, then putting some stuff in, us working with the academics. So when we get closer to the point, get closer to September, we may have a few more problems. But, but we're, as I, we've always said to people, we're not the policemen here. We're trying to help you get to a point where the university says that this is the minimum standard. Well, yes, I, th that's, that's a really interesting point. I mean, one of the things we've, we've, we've thought about, we've started speaking with DAs, is whether the baseline level is something which could be within the DA's uh, remit. Yeah, it could be within the DA, because it's mostly informational. Um, but things like, yeah, well, the, 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 what, what the forums were, they were, they were, were actually were more sophisticated than we, we'd actually thought we were at that time, because we said that the discussion forum there was simply a course information forum. It didn't have to be linked to an academic activity. Uh, so, so in fact, they could do it. Uh, whether that's a good thing as well, that's something we'd really just wanted to negotiate around with the DAs, because they're quite sensitive about their job role, and it, uh, you know, um, in, in the wider sense of you know, for grading and stuff like that, it's not, it's not, it's not just simply a teaching and, um, and learning question here. Um, so we could get to the point where that level we might say is <coughs> mostly by the DAs, but then to get beyond that, we, they cannot do that. They shouldn't do that because that's not their, that's not their job. Um, and I think that's, that's our next level of discussion. There's another question at the back. Sorry? Of the, of the laggards. Oh, the laggards. Well, like, yes, uh, yeah, I suppose so. I mean, the laggards are, it's, it's not necessarily, by the way, let, let's start from, what, what, from the first thing. It's not necessarily the older members of staff. That's not the case, but speaking as an older member of staff. Um, sometimes the young people, I, do, I work on our, uh, our postgraduate certificate. Some of the new te teachers coming in, they're not that keen on me to leave them for different reasons. You know, they're trying to build up a research career and you know, they're not really quite so focused on providing that teacher and learning support. Um, so what happens is, I think, for, for this particular group of people, is they're quite uh, risk averse in it, in, in, for whatever reason. Uh, the people who tend to be in the early adopters in Moodle are ones which are quite happy to have a go. And they don't mind falling in their face sometimes. You know, the students don't, they don't pick up on the, on the discussion forum or whatever. So if we imagine these people to be risk averse, we have to provide them much closer kind of support and much um, clearer guidelines. Uh, in order to make, make it more uh, less of a risk for them. So if we think about risk maybe as a kind of a way of a, a characteristic of the, of the laggards. Um, there are some departments where because of the uh, academic uh, culture um, that um, you know, the kind of online world is seen as slightly remote from their academic, main activi academic activity, which is quite a little surprising these days, but it's still part of it. Um, they are more difficult things to deal with. But, uh, so, so basically, we have to provide much more, uh, just more and more support to get into that kind of laggard group, if you like. And as I say, we never call them that. We just, we try and, we always try and support them in whatever way. Yeah, Claire. Thank you for having uh, When you conceded, it was just very, very familiar, Yeah. Um, I don't think we'll ever, I don't think, well, we've got, we've got something called the enhanced level, which has got more stuff in it. But I can't see we'll ever police that in the same kind of way, because it comes, once you get beyond the baseline, it becomes a part of academic choice. And I don't think we can really police academic choice. No, would we, would we want to? We would just like to be able to see people using more of the more advanced features of Moodle, essentially, and more of the advanced teaching and learning approaches that Gordon mentioned earlier on this morning. Yeah. 
it was a committee, I remember we sat down one afternoon, we said, what should we have in Moodle? And we didn't get it quite right, the thing about uh, your submitted glossary wasn't quite right. So, uh, but so amazingly enough, although it was just decided, an afternoon then we put it around for circulation, these are sort of things. Although it was that kind of ad hoc, it's actually fairly well stood as in good stead since it was uh, developed maybe about two years ago. Another question? starting you department it's so probably much more um, happy to share in their entire city so we're going through and suggesting improvements and um, finding good examples and we're still kind of working out the um, the details of how we're going to share this amongst the department, but we're, we're working with these um, Moodle working groups to kind of decide how we'll go about doing that. And we have considered case studies as well with our um, early adopters and uh, the people who are doing quite out there things. Um, and we're using things like the blog a lot more as well um, to promote that type of thing. We do still have that issue, and um, even though the material is owned by both the university and the academics, a lot of academics feel like they shouldn't have to put that out there for students. They, they're worried that students are going to steal that material, basically, and pass it around. Um, we have some suggestions to people who feel very strongly about that, um, using s things like um, iSpring to make it more difficult for students to take that material and print it out or copy it. Um, it's called iSpring. It basically allows you to put voiceovers on your um, PowerPoint presentations and it makes it into a movie. So if flash it's movie. a flash movie, yeah. So basically the students would have to sit there and print screen every PowerPoint slide. And that kind of makes a lot of people feel a bit more comfortable about putting their material up on Moodle. But we do try to encourage them to allow the students to print it out before lectures and don't really understand the, the, um, where they're coming from, really. That's quite interesting with Ice Spring, though, because uh, it's, um, I mean, the students can always, if they've got digital material, they can always find some way of printing it or doing something with it. But that seems to have worked quite well. And you say, well, this will prevent students, well, it will make it much more difficult for students to take your material and replicate it or, or take material. And that seems to have, something as simple as that seems to have done the trick for a certain group of staff. They seem to be quite happy with that. <coughs> yes, yes. Um, that hasn't been a major one, I don't think. No, for us. Um, it may be just the, it may be the institutional culture. I mean, I have worked in other places where that's been a much more of a hot topic, uh, but it hasn't been. I mean, if we start getting into areas of like uh, open educational resources, which we're just beginning to start to feel our way into as well, those issues come back up to the front again. Um, but our, our main re real issue has been around ones of copyright, actually. That's been the, uh, we, with our library is quite, um, quite keen to kind of um, p police the copyright of what's in, in, in the Moodle courses. And that's been a, for us actually, seems to have over, overshadowed any other areas of intellectual property. Um, yeah? Um, oh, I don't know yes, a lot about it really, no. Um, yeah, yeah, if you, if you Google iSpring, um, it'll come up and, and it's, so it's freely available. We used to use them called Empatica, but we've had a few issues lately. It's basically the same thing. Um, a little I, capital S, and then Spring.
Bu da bir önde oldu. 